Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, series of uh, generative AI called a snippet. So today we are going to talk about the retrieval augmented generation or RAG and one of, main, one of its main aspects, which is the evaluation of this system. But before we go into the details of uh, RAG evaluation, let's talk about what the RAG is and why we are reusing RAG. So RAG is a powerful model that combines two essential components named as retriever and generator. And um, this system can benefit a generative AI application from different perspectives. So the thing is, um, RAG can enable uh, more contextual understanding for the application. So usually all these LLMs such as GPT, Llama, and all those uh, language model um, generate responses based on the context provided to the input. And the RAG system can enable enhancement in the context that is provided to the model. So if the context is enhanced, so we can expect the model to generate more meaningful um, information for the users. Also at the same time, the RAG can help to reduce the hallucination of the model. So hallucinations refer to instance where uh, uh, large language models generate information that is incorrect or not supported by the context. So if we can provide the right context to the model, so we can also help the model uh, to reduce the hallucination and avoid hallucination for the model. Also, if you want to um, uh, customize a large language model to like a specific domain, RAG is a place that can help a lot. So usually organizations have like their own uh, data sets and they want to use those data set plus the large language model to answer any question from the user. So the RAG system can help to just uh, the, the, the organization to, to customize the, the output of the generative AI application to their own specific domain. There are other benefits uh, such as uh, uh, enhancing information retrieval plus the mitigating biases that uh, I would imagine that you can know based on these um, uh, benefits that I discussed about the RAG. So these are like the key uh, benefits for the RAG. And as I mentioned before, uh, RAG has two main components, retriever and generators. And if you want to talk about the evaluation, we need to actually be able to evaluate the output of these two components. So to better understand how a RAG system works, let's talk about the workflow that you can see here. So as you can see, so this is the, the, the whole workflow. So we, we usually have a like a, a generative AI application that is supported by the RAG system. And um, as I said before, RAG has two main components, retriever and generator. So the, 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 the workflow is very straightforward. So usually the user provide the prompt to the app, whatever like the user is requesting. And then um, usually if the, 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 the app is not supported by the RAG system, it actually just directly go to the large language model and then use that prompt to just generate the content. But for the RAG system, we also have like this uh, an component as a retriever, which is initially the app do a like a request through the retriever to a like a data search, the, the, the knowledge base uh, for the RAG system, which usually are uh, based on a vector database. So the app just make a request and just fetch the relevant information to the to that query that we get from the user. So it actually just trying to just provide better context for the final request to the large language model, which is we name it here as a generator component of the RAG system. And then when we have a right context plus the right template based on all this information that is fetched. So, so then we can say like that generator uh, component or the large language model can um, generate the right uh, contextual output to the user. So this is the, the, the whole workflow of the RAG system. And for sure, like evaluation is a key part here because evaluating a RAG system ensures that it's actually doing the the job effectively, uh, retrieving accurate information and also uh, generating meaningful response. So that's the reason we actually focus on RAG evaluation in this video. 
So as you can see here, I listed uh, six main metrics that can be used uh, to evaluate a rack system. And those evaluation metrics are based on uh, the, these two components, retriever and generators. So for the retriever, there are like four main metrics. So I'm sure if you are familiar with the classical machine learning uh, evaluation, we have like this precision and recall. Um, so it is for like classical, but then it's in the context of the uh, rack system, which we name it as a context precision and context recall. We also have another metrics as heat rate, um, and then the MRR or mean reciprocal rank. So these are like the four metrics that we have for the retriever part and also faithfulness and relevancies for the generator part. So if you want to go quickly through some of these uh, uh, metrics, so for context precision, so these metrics actually ensures that the most relevant information uh, is prioritized um, at the top rank of the retriever. So what so what's, what you usually do, like the thing is when we request information from the retriever, the retriever provide like let's say four or five chunk of information that is relevant to that query of the user and then uh, provide that to the app so that the app can decide how it can use those information to uh, generate the final prompt to the uh, large language model. So here, if we can make sure that those retrieve the chunk of information are relevant uh, to the to the user query, then we can just use the precision metrics to assess that that um, information. Also, recall is uh, uh, ensures that all the relevant parts or chunks directly related to the ground truths are captured. So this is another metrics that can be used. In terms of like the generator, so faithfulness and relevancy, faithfulness is more like whatever that the generator part is generating, how faithful it is to the retriever chunk of information from the retriever. So to make sure whatever it's provided to the user is uh, keep that uh, uh, relevant to the context, which is we expect the context to be through this information that we get from the retriever. And the relevancy is more how the output of this generator component is relevant to the query of the user plus that information that is retrieved from the retriever. So these are like the six main um, uh, metrics that can be used to assess a rack system. In next part, we're gonna go through a quick uh, code demo in Python so that you can better understand how you can calculate these metrics. So let's do it. All right, now go, let's uh, quickly go through an example code that you can use to, eva uh, to evaluate the output of a rack system. So because, we'll, um, so I'll actually just add the link to this repo, which is the Gen AI sample snippet, so that you can go and just find the, under the rack folder, you can find the code. So what I'm trying to do here is to just make it very simple and straightforward so that you can understand um, the, the nitty gritty of uh, RAG evaluation. So I'm not gonna use any sort of foundation model here or any sort of uh, complex component. Let's just make it very simple so that we can understand. Let's say we have um, in our retrieval component, which is a um, vector database, these are like the chunk of information that we have. I just put it like six chunk of information. And then we are going to use those as our reference, as our knowledge base, which are uh, put it in the, in the, let's assume a vector database so that we can just uh, retrieve those information. So these are like part of our retrieval component. So, and also these are like the six queries that we get from the user. Tell me about foxes, what's the story in the, distance colleagues, galaxy. So these are like the queries that we get from the user. And these are the ground uh, relevant chunk of uh, information to each query. Let's say, if I say, tell me about foxes, so chunk one and chunk five are relevant to this uh, um, uh, query. So in ideal case, they're relevant, uh, the, the, the retriever should provide these two document as a context for that user query so that we can just use the user query plus these two chunk of information from the retrieval to just go and request more information from the generator part or the um, LLM part. And the same things for other relevant, uh, other queries and also the relevant uh, chunk of information. So for 
Query number two, uh, chunk two and six, which are these two are relevant or uh, should be used as a context in ideal case. So now we have this function that we're going to use uh, to uh, evaluate the retriever part. So as I mentioned, we're going to use four main uh, metrics. So the input for this function are those chunk of information, the query of the users, and also the relevant uh, chunk dictionaries. So and we are assuming that the retriever component uh, just j the provide two uh, chunk to the when when there is when when any retrieve request uh, any request is, uh, comes to that retriever component. So let's start with the initialization of those four um, um, metrics: hit count. Uh, MRR, context precision, and context recall. So what we do, we go through all in these individual queries, and then let's say we just use the random function to just retrieve the chunk. But then for sure, like we can just come up with the logic here. We just because we don't have like any retriever in place, we just say okay, randomly let's say our retriever just provide a random chunk of information um, to to the to the app. So for sure, heat count. Heat count is, um, let's say, um, if I get this query, tell me about Fox. So for the purpose of heat count, we just say, okay, what are, uh, we, we have the ground truths, right? So one and five. So heat count, go through each individual queries and say, if one and five, if the, the retriever provide one of, at least one of these documents, so it actually, the heat count um, uh, just, do plus on that. So we go for individual queries, and then if any of those retrieve the chunk is um, in the retrieve chunk ground truth, uh, we just plus on that on the heat count. And then for sure, like at the end, to calculate the heat count, we just need to uh, divide heat count to the number of uh, uh, queries that we have so that we can find the heat count. For the MRR, is just more how, uh, let's say, you see for this specific query, chunk number one should be the first document. MRR is trying to just make sure that whatever that is provided by the retriever, there is a like a right uh, ordering. Uh, so let's say if number one, in the ideal case, number one and five, number one document should come first as a top rank, and then number five should go as a second document. So that's the ideal case for the MRR to just be a cost to one. So it actually just go, to, go through it, each individual and then find those um, relevancy and then the, the rank of those document and just uh, calculate the, the reciprocal rank or MRR that we mentioned before. So for, for the context and precision and context recall, so definitely we need to find the true positive and false positive. So these are like similar to the classical machine learning. And then for the true positive, we can just uh, uh, get this set. So we need to just split the retrieve chunk and also relevant chunk, and then find the common words within these two, two set. And for the false positive is just the, those words which are like the difference between these two sets. And then we can easily just find the context precision and cont, uh, context recall. So we go through this calculation and then find those retriever, um, retriever result. So for the faithfulness, as I said, faithfulness is uh, how um, the output of the generator component is faithful to the uh, output of the retrieve part. So again, the same story here, we just go through each individual queries and the generated responses, and then check the, the, the generated response to see whether that generated response is within those uh, a relevant chunk uh, for the query. And then if it is, we can say the, the result or the output is faithful to that received information, and if it's not, we just say it's not faithful. For the relevancy, again, the same things. We go through each individual chunk within the, uh, for the, uh, output and see whether that chunk is um, relevant to the uh, retrieved part plus the query of the user. And then we can easily just uh, find those. So these are like the two functions that we use to evaluate the, those uh, retrieval 
component plus the generator component. And we just have a, like a, a quick example and then we calculate those um, information. So that's about like a quick demo of how you can evaluate the rack system. So for sure you can, um, in the real world, you should have a, like a proper retriever, which is usually based on the vector database and then proper generator, which is usually based on those la large language model. And then you can use these metrics to just play with your rack system because you know, like rack system usually comes with different config. Let's say the size of this chunk is important config. Um, and some other configuration that you need to use. So you can just play with those configuration and use these metrics to assess the performance of your rack system and fine tune it. All right, so we can wrap now. So I hope you enjoyed this um, video. And for sure, like if you want to learn more about those systems, we're gonna have some more uh, videos coming about other aspects of generative AI and just um, if you you, you, you you like to just learn more about those, make sure to just su subscribe to this channel so that you can just be notified when a new video um, is published. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye.